Hey, how's it going everyone? I hope that you guys are all having an amazing day. This video we are going to go over a ton of patch notes for the upcoming Grounded update, as well as show off some amazing new discoveries on the Grounded test server that is out right now. I will be sure to warn you before any of the big spoilers, and I also want to mention that the Grounded test server actually let me bring my main game save over to it so we were able to jump into the solo woe mode that we play on and get a good feel as to how difficult some of this content might be we also end up discovering a major bug that hopefully they can end up fixing quickly and i will be playing the footage of all of that in the background while we go over the patch notes and then we will jump into creative so we can get a better look at everything that is under the water. If this video helps you out at all, then help me out by hitting that like button, but let's get right into it. Starting off with the new features that they have added, I am just going to read this list out one by one. So the pond has been revamped with a ton of new content. There is a new threat that is a koi fish and this thing is massive. There's also a new hostile creature called the Diving Bell Spider, two new passive creatures called the Tadpole and the Water Boatman, there is some new armor called the Koi Armor, two new building types called the Buoyant Foundation and the Buoyant Marker. There are six new materials here called the Koi Fish Scale, the Fish Bone, the Tadpole Meat, the Water Boatman Fin, lily pad wax and eelgrass there is also eight new recipes to discover in the gill tube the bubble helmet some fin flops the peblet dagger the bone dagger some decoy bait the bone trident and a slime lantern there's also a new food recipe called cooked tadpole meat and a new smoothie called fluid flippers. There's also three new mutations to discover. They don't name them off. Some additional features that they have added on all platforms is now the HUD markers can visually be toggled off or on on an individual basis in the map screen. This is gonna help a lot because I know right now on my map, I have a ton of markers all over the place. So many that they basically mean nothing to me. So now I'll be able to actually set up some the markers that help me out a ton. They also added HDR support with additional HDR options menu. Xbox and Steam game invites are now supported and they added an in-game invite screen that works with crossplay. You can now host a private game that does not show up on the game finder and your friends can only join via invite. They added a fix creature locations button in the options screen so you can reset the creatures in the backyard to their starting spawn point in case too many of the creatures are under the level or in weird locations. This is an interesting mechanic that I actually did not test out on the server yet unfortunately but I am genuinely interested in seeing how this ends up playing out. If any of you guys have played on the test servers yet then be sure to let me know down in the comments if you have tried this feature out i am genuinely curious as to how it works but moving on to some additional features specific to the xbox they have added mouse and keyboard support for xbox one and xbox series x and s consoles also screenshots now display on the save slash load screen for xbox for manual and auto saves moving on to some changes and tuning that they made starting with the movement the player will now sit at the surface of the water more easily when swimming. The player will no longer automatically jump out of the water when at the edge. Instead, they must press the jump control. The player now breathes through their face. I'm not 100% sure where they were breathing from before, but it has now been corrected and put on the facial region. They also increased how much time the player can last underwater without air before they end up dying. Uh, moving on to some changes to the mutations, they have doubled the bonus damage for all weapon base class mutations. They have also doubled the effectiveness of the juicy mutation, they doubled the effectiveness of the meat shield mutation, and they doubled the effectiveness of the buff lungs mutation. Some combat changes that they made include explosive damage can no longer be blocked, they reduced the rate at which bombardier hazards deal damage, bombardier shotgun spray attack now has double the wind up time, and bows now deal a little bit more damage. Water fleas will also now attempt to attack you and poison effects now deal 50% more damage to creatures and the player. Players can only attack with daggers, spears, and shovels while under the water. Moving on to some interface changes, the HUD marker icons now fade out a bit as they approach the edge of the screen to reduce noise when there are lots of trail markers built. They increase the number of key items slots shown in the data screen so if more than 30 are collected, you can view them all. 
and they added an unset respawn point to the rest slash respawn point screen. Moving on to some changes to the world, items floating on water will now eventually drift to the edge. They've reduced the cost of all tech chip science purchases by up to 40%. Of course that came in after I spent 10,000 science points on the zip lines, but they fixed zip line lines disappearing for clients while they are riding it or when they get far enough away. Some building changes that they have made, placing grid buildings that are snapped to other grid buildings should be much smoother for clients, especially at higher pings. Also, other buildings can be placed on top of tables now. Signs can now be placed on the ground in addition to walls and buildings can be placed on top of lily pads. Moving on to some crafting changes, the Liquid Gills smoothie now grants additional underwater breath time instead of granting water breathing. Moving on to some performance changes, they significantly reduced a large hitch when completing buildings in games that have a bunch of buildings already built. They also improved render thread performance with games that have a lot of buildings built that emit fire. That's really good because I have a ton of torches up on my roof section and I had to unlight them all because they were absolutely tanking my frames per second. But they also improved CPU performance with games that have a lot of trail markers built, and the game will no longer lag when an interactive range of a building piece that's part of a large structure. I'm not 100% sure what they mean by that, but also additional general improved rendering performance. Lastly, we have some bug fixes to go over, starting off with the top community issues. Harvestable objects in or near bodies of water can now respawn correctly. For example, the husky weeds. Clients can now successfully join games with a large amount of removed foliage. They also fixed a random crash when loading into the yard, and they fixed a crash that could occur when kicking players from a game. Moving on to some game bug fixes, the craft burgle quests for recipes can also be completed by crafting the upgraded version of the recipe if that's available. Clients can no longer cause hauled items to float in the air by constructing buildings while hauling certain stacks of them. They also fixed an issue where conversations would stop working in-game, including the Burgle Conversations UI showing nothing when interacting with him. They fixed an issue where the keyboard hotkeys on the map screen stopped working after dragging your mouse, and they also fixed a handful of low-frequency crashes for clients dealing with item replication. Moving on to item equipment and resources bug fixes, they have made it to where Analyzing Silk Rope now actually unlocks recipes instead of just displaying that it does. Floors can no longer be placed on top of foundations, clipping into them. Moving on into some world bug fixes, the Orb Weaver Juniors now have proper death messages, and they fixed an issue with water creatures being able to get out of the water. Moving on to some UI bug fixes, the motion blur setting will now properly be reapplied when you restart the game. Last on the list here, we have something that I am genuinely curious as to if you guys have any ideas about, but they say here at the bottom that ominent practical technologies dramatically increased and then they say redacted uh, at first I was super confused by this but then I actually went and googled ominent practical technologies and found out that this is the company that actually created the shrink rays that shrunk all of the people in the grounded universe so basically this is like lore that is tied into these patch notes and I'm genuinely super curious as to what exactly got dramatically increased. I'm wondering if this might be some sort of riddle, maybe some sort of clue and we need to like dig a little bit further. I'm not sure. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments, but let's move on here. And before we get into any of the spoilers, I want to show you guys this crazy bug that we ran into. So right here, when I was swimming up on the water, I was trying to jump up on this leaf. But as I jumped up on the leaf, I didn't make it and my head clipped like a corner of the leaf. And after it clipped that corner of the leaf, what happened was my player just basically fell through the air. It fell through the water like the water was air and I fell all the way down to the bottom taking a massive amount of fall damage. Uh, and then after I would take that fall damage, of course it would act like I was in the water again. So I wasn't able to go about my day like normal, like I was, wasn't in the water, but uh, I was actually able to recreate this bug as well. So this is something that I will be sending in to the developers. Hopefully they can get it fixed. Also, I was not able to figure out how to kill this koi fish at all. I was slicing it up like crazy and it chomped me up twice. I even made the bait in the, wo in the solo woe mode that I play. I made the 
the bait for him and basically it just swam around in circles and nothing I was doing was causing it any damage. I'm not 100% sure exactly how to go about damaging that thing. I'm wondering if that is something that we need to figure out as well. But I do want to point out that a lot of this content was really, really cool and in the solo woe mode, I mean, it was... It was hard. This is going to be pretty difficult content to work your way through, and I'm excited. I'm excited to get my hands on it in the actual game. Uh, you'll see here I was wearing my ant armor at first, and one of those new spiders actually straight up one-shot me with the ant armor. Absolutely wild. Uh, I went and put on the ladybug armor after that and obviously was able to uh, fare a lot more better against those water spiders. And in this public test server, those water spiders didn't drop anything but webs. So I'm wondering if maybe they're going to add some drops to it. That would be nice to see maybe some an extra place, an extra place to get some venom because I know that in the actual game, I'm not going to be going down into the water to try and farm these things just for some web. That's for sure. I'll be mostly avoiding them unless unless they were to like give some venom or something but they were definitely a hard kill not as hard as the wolf spider but hard because you're in the water but let's move on into some spoilers we have got some crazy things to go over here so essentially what had happened was when i hit that bug with the leaf i fell all the way down to the bottom of the water and found this big hole so I went swimming in this hole, man, and since I was on my solo woe mode, I ended up running out of breath and dying, but I came across this, like, huge underwater area with all of these lights, and I was, like, so overwhelmed, I had no idea what was going on. So what we ended up doing was we jumped into creative mode so we can go and take a closer look at what all of this might be, and I've got some exciting things to share here, so if you don't want to be spoiled with any of the stuff that comes next, then be sure to click off the video now, but... Let's jump right into it, starting off with this T-Rex, which actually scared me when I came down here because I did not see it the first time I was down here. Uh, but this thing is massive. And also I found out there are actually a couple ways to get from the top of the pond to the bottom of the pond, if you will. There's not only one hole that you can use to get down here. There's, for example, the hole that I used the second time on the creative server was under that plant pot. But anyways, there's this huge dinosaur, which is pretty cool. And I'm sure will come with some sort of, uh, I forget what those things are called. They recolor your whatever, your UI. But let's get into the juicy stuff, which is these four dials that you had to light. And since we were on creative mode, we didn't have any breath or air to worry about. So uh, I'm not entirely sure how hard this is going to be to get done in game. And I'm almost certain that you are going to need that water helmet that I was even wearing in creative mode. I don't think that would have mattered. I think I would have had unlimited breathing underwater regardless. But I'm pretty sure you're going to need that helmet to be able to get all of this done. But once you turn on all four of these switches, you are able to get into this underwater bunker, which is massive. It is so much bigger than I thought it was. And originally I thought, you know, we were going to get stuck again and there was going to be no way to uh, progress forward. But actually moving on forward, we were able to work our way all the way through this underwater bunker and get to the portion where you guys saw underwater that big dome piece that was sticking out from the bottom of the pond. And actually from there, we were able to push some more buttons that opened up that dome piece to where we were able to see out of it which was really cool actually I'm uh, excited to get into this in the actual game like I said and see what story there is behind it because I don't know if it's because I was in creative mode or what but I wasn't getting any story fed to me while any of this was happening I didn't actually explore the entirety of the pond I found this crazy laboratory and decided to put this video up here to go over the patch notes and show you guys some of the crazy stuff that I found. Be sure to let me know down in the comments if there's anything that you have found underwater so far. And if you guys haven't checked it out already, I would highly suggest jumping on the public test server because it was loads of fun and it has me super hyped up for when this finally comes into the game. Uh, this will be some actual content to sink our teeth into. Other than that though, I hope you guys all have an amazing day. I'm out.